Hey everyone, welcome to the ETH Staker community call. I think it's number 11. Uh, today is November 16th, 2020. We have uh, an exciting call today. We have a bunch of uh, community members who are here to chat with us about their experience using uh, the deposit launch pad um, and experiences with uh, how things have unfolded with deposits in general. Um, and before we get started, I'd like to introduce a couple people, um, namely the ETH Staker core team. That's uh, Lamboshi, who you know as, or I know as Nolan, uh, Patricio Werthalter, who represents POAP as well, um, Michael Giesen, who goes by Unvetica, and Buddha, who goes by Enon. Uh, that's really backwards, but uh, the Butter Man. I was going to call you Butter because I finally, uh, Buddha has a Identicon on Discord that is a yellow swirl, and I just found out that that is a butter swirl because his name is Butter. I don't get it. Anyway, um, as we get rock and roll on this call, we have two major parts today. The first part is really exciting. It's a discussion with Jerome from Ledger. Um, and in our pre-call, we chatted, and um, our participants know that Jerome is willing to ask to discuss any questions. The two things we're most excited to hearing about today are the integration with, of uh, the Ethereum 2 launch pad with Ledger X. Um, and I know that a lot of people have uh, still these swarming questions about um, the data breach that they'd like to learn more about. Uh, so let's see, without further ado, uh, let me tell you that we're gonna spend probably 15 or 20 minutes chatting with Jerome. And then following that, we're going to spend uh, 15 or 20 minutes or however long we go um, chatting about experiences with the launch pad, uh, good, bad, or neutral, just an opportunity to learn. Uh, so Jerome from Ledger, welcome. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for, for giving me the, the opportunity to, uh, to speak today about uh, what we are doing uh, at Ledger to, uh, to support Ethereum 2. Uh, I've prepared a couple of slides to, uh, to share with you uh, in order to, to frame the discussion. So I'm, I'm also uh, quite excited to see uh, a couple of uh, known faces in the, in the chat. Uh, Patricio, Jez, uh, it's, uh, it's good to, to see you there. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, sad that I didn't uh, hear about uh, this call before. Um, because myself, I've, I've been, uh, I've been um, uh, staking uh, since... Uh, uh, Medala and and, uh, and uh, tested before. Uh, so I work at Ledger as the, the global head of client success. So I'm, I'm responsible for the, the support both on the B2B and B2C side. And I also run a, a couple of our initiatives such as uh, participate with the initiative on Ethereum 2. Uh, and I hope to, to see you all uh, in March uh, at NCT in Paris, because uh, we are going to do this uh, conference again. So I hope, uh, hope to, to see you there uh, uh, as well. Um, so what we've been doing so far regarding um, Ethereum 2 support at Ledger. Uh, so as you know, we have uh, the withdrawal key and the validating key. That's the different keys that you need to, to deposit, uh, to, you need to, to generate and put in the, um, in the deposit function of the deposit contract. And it's currently a kind of a pain to, to do so. Uh, you, need to you need to download the, the command line interface from the foundation. And uh, from this uh, command line and generate uh, your uh, recovery phrase and uh, your, your two different keys uh, or your multiple keys if uh, you, want, uh, you want to use uh, several uh, validators. And for us, uh, doing that is uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the wrong way to do so. Uh, generating your, your, your seed phrase on the, your computer. Uh, if your computer is, uh, is compromised, that's, that's a problem. Uh, copy pasting, uh, if your computer is compromised, that's a problem. Uh, dropping uh, the recovery phrase uh, inside a, a, an email or a file, it's, it's a problem as well. So we, we wanted to make sure that we allowed our clients to, uh, to actually do that on their own uh, inside uh, the, the secure um, environment of a Legion Nano. So that's what we've been uh, busy doing. Uh, back in early uh, August, uh, if you've been following closely our firmware release, 
uh, we added in uh, early August uh, the cryptographic support for uh, Stark 256 and DLS 12 uh, 381. So that was uh, our first step, uh, a, let's say a, a discrete first step in uh, supporting uh, Ethereum 2. And from that, uh, we have created an Ethereum 2 app uh, that you can see on, on this uh, picture I've, uh, I've taken this afternoon on my uh, own uh, Legend Nano X. And there is an Ethereum 2 application you can access right now. Uh, so we, we've created this Ethereum 2 app and tried to reach out to, uh, to devs that were willing to, uh, to test it. Uh, I've been um, uh, trying to be vocal on the Prismatic Lab uh, Discord about that, saying uh, if you want to try it out, uh, let me know. Uh, uh, you need to change the, the provider in your ledger line, but you'll be able to find this app if you, if you have the right provider, and you will be able to, uh, to interact with it. So this Ethereum 2 app uh, supports creating and verifying uh, messages sent to the deposit contract, because we have another version of the Ethereum 1 app that uh, pass the contract for properly and you'll be able to uh, retrieve withdrawal keys, retrieve signing public keys uh, given the HD pass that is uh, uh, recommended inside the ELP uh, 2333. Uh, and you can also sign arbitrary message uh, using uh, the, the withdrawal and validating key uh, over the proper curve. Uh, there is a documentation available uh, if you would like to give it a go. I'll, I'll drop the link uh, in, the, in the chat. And uh, if, you, if you want to interact uh, uh, remotely with your, uh, if you want to interact directly with your, with your uh, Nano X, uh, you'll be able to do uh, anything that uh, you are supposed to be doing in order to uh, participate to the deposit contract in order to, uh, to, to interact with your keys from the node. And what I'm happy to announce today is that tomorrow uh, we will do uh, publicly this new firmware release um, that uh, let you publicly access to the Ethereum 2 app and the new uh, Ethereum 1 app, uh, 1.6.0. Uh, so there is already a, a message on our Ledger Academy website that uh, we've used to, to tease the, the event. Uh, and the change log will be uh, published tomorrow uh, on our app center. Uh, so tomorrow uh, you won't even have to, to use the, the documentation I'm going to drop in the, in the chat because uh, you'll be able to access it. Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's going to be made publicly available tomorrow. Uh, what's next on our hand? Well, we want to have a better uh, ledger support in the launchpad. Uh, so if you guys uh, inside the, the chat or, or uh, watching this later uh, are willing to give it a go on how to, uh, to integrate the ledger uh, directly inside the launchpad and uh, prevent, uh, well, not prevent, but propose a different, uh, a different approach than the common interface, do reach out. Uh, I will be very happy to connect you with uh, the team developing that uh, at, uh, at Ledger and, and, uh, and help you on supporting this. Um, it would be uh, great to have uh, Ledger 2, uh, Ethereum 2 Ledger uh, wallet management available in the nodes uh, in a similar way to uh, what is done uh, with uh, Tezos and Cosmos validators. So uh, there is a, a staking app for Tezos and Cosmos available on Ledger Nano. Uh, if you are a validator on those chains, you just uh, use this app and, and, and do the validation works directly from your Nano. So uh, you won't have to, uh, to do the, the, the old trick directly uh, from your, your computer. You can have the, the wallet being hosted uh, inside your Ledger Nano. Um, so myself, for example, I, I deposited the 64 Ether uh, and uh, I, I generated my, my withdrawal key uh, using, uh, using my, my Ledger Nano, but I'm fine with having the, the, the validating key uh, hot. Uh, but if uh, someone is willing to, to generate, uh, to, to create a, a connector, maybe on et do, for example, uh, the, the things that have been developed by, uh, by um, attestants, uh, I think it's, a, it's a, a, an appropriate uh, path to, uh, to follow. Um, what's next? Uh, what, what else is next? Uh, so we want to look at uh, different uh, staking services, possibly inside Ledger Live. So we've been chatting with uh, several uh, staking services that uh, are about to go live uh, to see how uh, we could give them access to, uh, to Ledger Live. 
um, and we have our ongoing uh, discussions with, with them. So if you plan on having a, a staking service uh, that will give access to staking capability to uh, the retail, uh, do let us know. We are looking for partners and uh, have a, a tendency to be very agnostic in our partners. So very happy to have a chat about this. And uh, at later stages, we are going to uh, uh, have the Ledger Nano S support on Ethereum 2. Uh, the reason why we, we focused on uh, Nano X first is because the Nano X has a, a, high, a bigger memory. Uh, so it's easier for us to, to support new curve on this. Uh, but we lack challenges and we like to, to try to, to fit a complex curve uh, directly inside the, the small, lovely device that is the Legion OS. Uh, so we are going to, to work on this now and hopefully uh, provide a, a support on the Nano OS as well. So I'm, I'm going to drop the, the documentation, the link to the, in, the, in the chat for you to, to peruse if you want to check it out. Uh, there's all the information you need to use this app uh, if you want to try it out and uh, very willing to, to take questions if you guys have any. Yes, I have a few. <laughs> um, will I be able to export, like can I um, sign uh, a message? Um, so I, like can I create my own uh, input data through the larger, uh, Ledger UI or is it only possible with the um, existing tools with the... So it's, uh, it's the, the app lets you uh, sign the uh, arbitrary uh, message um, inside the, the Nano. Uh, you will have to request the signature uh, using uh, a simple uh, command from the command line. Uh, so it's, it's uh, explained in the doc I shared in the, in the chat. Uh, you communicate with your Legend Nano, you ask for the signature, and uh, you'll see on the, on the, on the device uh, what you, you are about to sign. And you can also set, uh, set up your, your nano so that uh, it will accept uh, on the flight the request uh, the signature. Okay, I think my question was rather if I was if I'm able to export the input data so I can do um, deposits manually so I don't have to go through the launchpad, um, or is that not possible? Um, it's uh, it's going to be uh, possible for you to do that um, by generating a transaction the same way uh, you can generate a transaction to, in command line for your uh, Legend nano to sign. Um, so there, there are there are commands you can use to uh, request for uh, uh, you to send uh, to send ether to uh, Jerome. That if uh, I don't own this uh, ENS name, or let's say you want, you want let's say you want, you want to send uh, uh, one ether to us. That if I got this one, uh, you you can do so with your with your Ledger Nano uh, with your command line, and you have the push notification on your device saying, do you recognize this transaction? Do you want to sign it? Well, if you do that with the, um, with the Legion Nano X uh, and the Ethereum 2 app, uh, you will have the request to do a deposit to the address uh, 8 times 0, whatever is the, the deposit contract address. Uh, you will see that on your Legion Nano, and uh, it will open the Ethereum 1 app. And the way that the new Ethereum 1 app work, uh, it will tell you explicitly that you are interacting with the, you are about to interact with the deposit contract. You are about to interact with the deposit function. And you are about to send this as uh, the validator key, uh, this as the checksum, this as the so on and so forth. Uh, so you will have to create your own transaction, let's say, or if you plug your Ledger Nano to your MetaMask, uh, because some people do that, and you interact directly with, uh, with MetaMask, uh, having uh, the request for signature sent to your Legend Nano X will also display the interaction with the, the deposit contract uh, on screen. All right. Um, the, the next question is actually from the chat, but I have the same question. Um, will there be ways to actively stake through the ledger? So the validator key has to be um, online. Um, is there a way to stake with the ledger? Um, or yeah. So we, know, we know that uh, some, uh, on some protocols, uh, I, I, I know uh, on, on some Tezos Baker uh, do that, some, some, uh, some Cosmos validators do that as well. Uh, they have developed a custom uh, validation app uh, that rely on our support of the, of the, the Tezos and Cosmos uh, blockchain. Uh, so they have crafted the um, bespoke application uh, that do the validation. They do the validation work. Uh, it's good also because you can uh, you can potentially um, 
uh, use that uh, to uh, enforce some uh, checks about uh, if you if you are going to, to sign two things at the same heights, for example, you can have this uh, inside the memory of uh, of your ledger nano. Uh, we, we don't have that uh, currently, uh, and we don't really plan on, on, on developing that in the short run. Uh, but well, it's it's an open it's an open OS, so uh, like people have been developing those, those apps. Uh, so technically, it's completely possible to write your own uh, script and uh, request for the nano when it's connected to do the signature on the flight. Uh, I hope that in the short run, uh, people will have, will be developing an uh, app uh, to, to do it more natively. Uh, right now, my, my preferred setup uh, is to uh, have my visual key hosted in my Ledger Nano uh, because I'm, I'm very confident in how it was generated. I'm, I'm confident I'd be able to access it properly. I'm confident with uh, how the how, how the how I'm keeping my entropy, uh, my recovery phrase, and so on. Uh, but I'm, uh, I, 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 since there is no uh, there is no real support on the on on the client side, on the Ethereum two client side, uh, on requesting the signature from the validator key, uh, I prefer to have it hot and not hosted in my Ledger Nano. But uh, it's Technically, completely possible to do that. Okay. Um, I know that you have been active in the very, uh, really early stages of Ethereum 2. Um, and one of my questions was Did you experience anything through the uh, first test nets where you thought, oh, maybe Ledger can fix that? <laughs> uh, so, such as uh, validators going offline? <laughs> Uh, not really, just a key creation because uh, in the first test nets, maybe the Topaz test net with Prism, yeah. we had no launchpad. Everyone had to do its deposit uh, by themselves. And in the late test nets, the launchpad uh, launched and this kind of problem was solved. So, yeah, I, I felt personally more comfortable uh, with uh, uh, interacting with the. Well, I, I remember Prismatic, for example, as uh, and, uh, and many uh, scripts that you uh, were uh, able to easily use to generate your key, uh, prepare the transaction, and interact directly with the with the smart contract, with the blob that uh, they have generated. Uh, put that in your in your MetaMask or your wallet and do the deposit. Uh, I, I I felt really good about it. Uh, like uh, for me, it was easy to uh, to use, and uh, I I felt okay with that. Uh, the the foundation deploying the launchpad was a good move in order to uh, you know just showcase something that uh, is uh, retail friendly or is a uh, is uh, nice and shiny and uh, and it looks cool. Uh, but at some point, if you're if you're not technical, you get boom. Uh, go to GitHub, download the thing, uh, install this, and now pick a language for your for your uh, for for your recovery phrase. Wow. Uh, I think that uh, suddenly there is a gap. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, here, here's basic arithmetic. Uh, boom. Uh, let's uh, let's switch to something uh, super complicated like uh, fra fractal or whatever. Like, okay, uh, that's that's uh, that's a little bit um, that, that's a little bit harder. Um, I, I would have preferred to uh, have left that to to clients, uh, but you know, uh, that, that's not my call. Uh, and and not and now um, uh, I think there is there is uh, things we, we uh, uh, wallet provider need to uh, to, have, to to work on uh, in order to offer a large uh, large support uh, for this. All right. And one question from the chat is by Phil Eve. Has there any uh, has there been any third party audits for the Eve two app on the Ledger Nano X? Uh, no, there has not been. Uh, for us, it's uh, not no third party, but there is a, an internal uh, audit at our security team, the dungeon team uh, of, uh, of of Ledger. Uh, so the, the team that tests uh, other people's uh, uh, hardware wallets, uh, the team that tests the, the, the HSM uh, that uh, we use and so on, that do a pen, pen testing and, and so on. Uh, but from a, from a purely uh, technical uh, point of view, it's uh, about uh, supporting a, a a cryptographic curve, and uh, inheritates the the security of the the OS itself uh, on top of this. So uh, the the attack uh, surface is uh, is 
quite limited as long as uh, we can prove uh, that the, the curve is correctly represented, uh, there is no uh, real uh, thing to be worried about. I mean, if you deposit it yourself, we have to trust it, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, the, the withdrawal key, uh, nobody has tested the withdrawal key as far as I'm aware. <laughs> so, uh, we are all in the same boat. <laughs> uh yeah we will do that in two years <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> one question by michael is if i use the same c trace in ethereum 2 deposit cli as for the ledger setup will the resulting public keys be the same in other words can i use the ledger service from now on for key management so um well i i, I cannot guarantee that so, uh, I, I, because I, I don't remember uh, exactly which uh, pass the, 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 the foundation has chosen uh, in the deposit command line interface. Uh, I will have to, uh, to, to, come to verify that and uh, I'll answer on Twitter to, to make sure I don't give you uh, false, uh, false information. Um, one thing I should mention is that um, if you want to do everything in the command line interface and you have uh, generated your entropy on your Ledger Nano, you've written down your 24 words, uh, and now you select the, the, the option uh, recovery a phrase on the command line interface that will make you input your 24 words uh, on your computer, uh, which we strongly uh, advise against because if your computer is compromised, you may compromise your, your 24 words by doing so. So the only place you should ever put your 24 words is inside the hardware wallet. Uh, that's, that's, that's how we, we, that's our security model. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing so, but for the sake of, uh, of, co of completion, uh, I'll, I'll check out, uh, how is the, the pass derivated and tell you if uh, that's going to be uh, compatible. Okay, last question from my side. <laughs> Will the Ledger UI ever try to compete with the Launchpad or not really compete, but offer an alternative? So right now the Launchpad is kind of a single point of failure. If it's down, nobody's able to deposit. Um, what we call if Ledger kind of supports that feature to deposit. Um, so it's, uh, well, so uh, we, we have we have a two spectrum uh, we, we, on the spectrum of the, the crypto user at Ledger we have uh, a lot of clients that are super tech savvy and super crypto savvy, and on the and on the other end uh, we have uh, lots of uh, uh, entry level people uh, from their awareness of crypto that uh, bought a Ledger to save you their, their crypto and uh, now are doing stuff on Ledger Live buying crypto swapping crypto and uh, managing their portfolio and that's it. Uh, so for us, it's a bit complicated to find the right balance because uh, we know that we open the thing, uh, we, we open a, a new app and we let people develop around it. Um, so that's, that's great. And uh, we know that uh, uh, many people are using their ledger directly when they go on Uniswap, when they go on IDEX, when they go on whatever. Uh, but for, for those, the support in the ledger live uh, is probably going to be overkill. And uh, for the the, the less crypto savvy people uh, running a node and, uh, and participating uh, to the staking is where the whole Ethereum community should aim, but it's kind of complicated for us to push our, 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 uh, our clients uh, towards this. So I think, uh, having an alternative to the launchpad would probably be, uh, uh, you, I can interact with the deposit contract directly from Ledger Live. So that would mean that, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, the average Joe uh, is going to uh, to do uh, staking, uh, so we we would rather have uh, a, a staking as a service uh, provider that uh, is integrated with us and and provide this alternative rather than doing it ourselves, because we don't want to have the situation where people contact me at the support saying like, hey, I just deposited thirty two E for what do I do now? Like, oh man, uh, no, uh, <laughs> well. Let's install a Lighthouse node and uh, an Ethereum One node and uh, be, uh, uh, be connected 60% of the time. So a very good situation for us would be, uh, I think, to have uh, an alternative to the Launchpad process inside the Launchpad to not download the command line interface, but to connect your Legend Nano and have the things being done. I think that's, that would be the, 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 
the easiest way to go and the safest way to go, in my opinion. Awesome. Thank you for answering all the questions. We're interested to develop that, so re reach out. Uh, we, we will help. <laughs> Are there any other questions in the chat, maybe? Uh, I think I covered all of them. If not, yeah, I'll pass it over to Fizz. Hey, thank you, Jerome. Uh, Thanks, I'm excited Andy. to be able to use uh, Ledger on the Launchpad. Um, I know one thing that uh, we had talked about, Launchpad being a single point of failure, and we discussed it in the chat, and we know that the Launchpad is also deployed on IPFS. So um, if for some weird reason the canonical version of Launchpad goes down, you could still connect through IPFS, and if you're using a Ledger, you could still use the Ledger through MetaMask on IPFS. Um, so no, no real worries about, about anything there. Um, and thank you, Jerome. We appreciate your time. I'm going to move on to the kind of next thing that is still ledger related, but we haven't really made it public because we've been internally discussing it. Um, the ETH Staker team is going to offer a uh, raffle for a ledger Nano X um, that will ship to anyone anywhere. Uh, and so uh, as a little background to this, to be eligible for, to win this Ledger Nano X, um, first you'll want to get the POAP uh, for this call. And for people who are new to POAP, it is the proof of attendance protocol token. Um, they're kind of like uh, internet stickers for adults. And so you can collect these POAPs and you'll have your POAP wallet and, and it's, it's really neat. We kind of have one for every event we do. And so to be eligible to participate in the raffle for this Ledger Nano X, you'll need to have any POAP since the Topaz testnet, which has been several months ago. Um, any of those POAPs will allow you to be eligible for the raffle. To participate, you'll go to poap.fun, and that is a raffle site hosted by POAP. And when you get there, you'll see a raffle for the ETH2 Stakers Ledger Wallet Raffle. Um, and from there, you will uh, activate your wallet and enter the raffle. We'll hold the drawing. Uh, I think it's going to be in a, about 18 hours from this call. So uh, even if you're watching this call late, if you hear about this on Reddit, I encourage you to share it on Twitter. Give everyone who might be interested a chance to check up on this call when it's posted and to participate in the raffle. Um, it'll be a fun time to test this raffle toy. Um, in addition, so there's another, POAP has a lot of neat products. Uh, there's another product that we haven't talked about a lot, but I'd like to tell you about real quick. It's POAP.gallery. Um, and if you look at POAP.gallery, you'll be able to see um, the POAP from today's call displayed there along with a really neat um, searchable um, searchable page that was developed by um, one of our East Acres, Buddha and his friend Stefan and they did a great job with it. Uh, so uh, did I get everything right about the raffle? Um, um, people can show in the raffle any time between now and tomorrow morning in the US so in the next 20 hours. Um, you don't need to be online uh, to see the, the actual raffle, but because the winner is picked based on the gas usage of, it, of uh, the block after the cut of time, it would be nice if you're online. Um, I expect to be online on the Discord to see how it goes. Um, we may do something uh, around this idea for the issue design contest. So it makes sense for you to check out um, the pop boat and raffle thing. Um, the Ledger Nano X seems to be the hardware wallet to get. So, so the award is nice. Um, if there's a demand for second prices, we may toss some pins on it. So, so uh, even if you don't win the, um, the main prize, it makes sense to participate. If you have any question, you can reach out on our Discord or anywhere else. And now, we we'll know uh, every every pop you has counts as one ticket, right? Uh, yes, that has been said like that on purpose. So the more loyal you are to the H-Taker community, the more your voting power is. Um, I have 
like a hundred tickets because I run Pow Up. But I guess that if <laughs> I win, uh, we will keep the prize either for the second uh, random pick or for a, uh, a raffle next time. And there's now no for gas. the winner will just sign a trans sign a message, right? No. Uh, yeah, you don't need to have any gas or anything. Um, it doesn't matter if your Pow Ups are on mainnet or on X die or split apart in both. Um, and it should be as straightforward as it can be. Uh, you get on the website, you click on join, um, you sign a message with MetaMask or your wallet of preference, and that's it. All right, right on. So what we'll, what we'll return is the address of, an, uh, of a POAP holder, and then we'll need to establish contact with whoever holds that address, is that right? Um, yeah, I see that like uh, 50 pop-ups already have shown. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, if you refresh the website, it shows oh, all there the only 40, There are only 45 people in the call. How do they know? <laughs> oh, yeah, because I said pop-ups, not people. Maybe someone with many. Oh, all right. And so as, as a reminder, uh, we're only, so far, we've, this is the only announcement. We've just made this public, um, and the... the um, raffle ends in about 20 hours. So um, I'd appreciate if you, well, why would you do that? Why would you tell all of your friends? Because then they're just competition, but mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity. <laughs> I hope you will participate with us. Um, okay, from there, we want to, um, I think Michael is going to introduce our round table. Yes, okay, so today we're gonna be doing something a little different. Uh, where we've asked a handful of brave community members to share their experiences when using the launchpad process and becoming a validator. Um, we're doing this in an open roundtable discussion uh, so we can learn as a group and help each other uh, be more successful when solo staking. Uh, so sort of to open that up, uh, I'd like to start with Kevin. I believe he had a question on double deposits. Yeah. Well, thanks, first of all, for uh, opening this discussion up. And uh, Jerome, thank you for all the details on the, the ledger stuff. Appreciate that. But um, this might be a question that I think is going to touch on a lot of people's uh, uh, concerns. And it happened to me after a couple of test nets. I think it was Zinkin. Uh, prior to that, uh, the deposit, a contract, a launch pad in general was a very smooth process. But I did end up, I did end up submitting the same deposit data for a validator multiple times. And I guess the question is an open one, like what's the consequence of that for someone who might find themselves refreshing a launch page and going through and depositing the, or dropping the deposit JSON in the uh, UI again? Did that happen on the mainnet? If it happens on mainnet, yeah. <laughs> I think that was a launch pet bug, but they fixed it. But if it happens again, um, yeah, the, you can only stake. So the rewards are based on the effective balance and you can only have 32 as a maximum. So if you have 64 deposited, you will only use half of it to stake actively. The other 32 will kind of be irrelevant and you kind of not really lost it because you will be able to withdraw it. But yeah, they have no use. Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and the clarity around what the additional deposits actually represent uh, uh, was helpful too, because I think a lot of us are thinking about the consequences of putting any amount of significant value in our validators, among all the other things like security and all that. If, if we get to the, uh, the finish line, so to speak, and we start launching mainnet and then have a situation where additional assets are locked up in some bizarre way, uh, yeah, I was just curious about those consequences. So I'm glad to hear that the, uh, there was at least a bug identified related to that, and it was fixed. So I appreciate you guys doing that. I mean, in the early stages of the Ethereum 2 testnets, um, the effective balance actually dropped really fast. So if you were not online um, ASAP after you deposited, um, it didn't drop instantly, but very fast. And the idea was to have some kind of insurance balance. So instead of depositing 32 if you deposit 30. 32.1 ETH. So if you lose or miss a few attestations, you don't instantly drop your effective, ba your effective balance doesn't drop uh, instantly. But yeah, that was changed luckily. And now we don't have to worry about that and everyone is depositing 
only 32 if it's dead. <laughs> right. Well, the penalties are uh, a quarter of what they were too. So you'll have even more time before your effective balance gets reduced. Yeah, back in the days, it was way harder to be a validator. <laughs> Um, Kevin, actually, did you, uh, have you tried to, or did you deposit on the mainnet? You don't really have to answer, but I'm actually curious about the part where you, where it asks you to the, to sync your Ethereum one node, which is one of my main criticisms about the launchpad, because it lets you to do the deposit, but the deposit process itself is really fast, but syncing the mainnet can take up to a day. So technically speaking, your deposit can get through and you still are syncing your ETH1 mainnet node and you will lose your ETH because um, the node is not synced yet. Yeah. Have you had that experience or is it just me? Uh, I, I haven't had my, that experience in, uh, in past test nets and I plan on making those experiences mirror my mainnet experience. So I'm going to have everything synced at Genesis as best as I can. Yeah, it, right now. Go ahead. It would be interesting if they set it up so any transactions you make through the launch pad are forced to go through your own local ETH1 node. And that would prevent that situation. And also if it was connecting to your local ETH1 node, it could check and make sure you're not doing a double deposit kind of messes up the user experience a little bit, but also I think it would be safer. The UI would have to be explicit about asking that question relative to, are you using your own infrastructure or using another, like, are you, you know, using Infure or something else? Or, I don't know. Yeah, that's true too. I'm actually going through the launchpad right now uh, because actually it changed a lot because um, on the previous test net, um, there were a few criticisms the community had and they fixed it, which is really nice. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, right now it's also asking you to, uh, to sync with the Ethereum 2 node first be before you do the deposit, but right now there is none of them. Or maybe, oh wait, Teco is available. I think Ben is listening. He will be smiling when, when I say Tango. <laughs> um, yeah, that is kind of a user experience, bad user experience. But besides that, um, what else would you guys, you guys um, have as a, as a suggestion for the Launchpad team, maybe? I'll just, uh, I'll have one more comment before I pass along to somebody else. But um, in my experience throughout the four test nets, uh, largely a good experience. And uh, that includes uh, good experiences around not just the test net themselves, but the number of deposits I've personally done in those experiences. So anywhere ranging between a, uh, a couple to a couple dozen, largely good. And uh, I just want to say thanks to everyone working really hard to work, work through these things and get it going. Yeah, compared to how, I don't know, the f when Ethereum launched and to compare, compare to Ethereum 2 right now, it's a completely different word, world. <laughs> um, I think Logan had also a few stuff to mention. Sure, yeah, thanks guys for the invite. Um, so so my, my Linux experience is, is decent. And first of all, I mean, I wouldn't have done any of this if it wasn't for the C Staker community. Um, when I first started looking into staking, just came across the Reddit, watched the intro YouTube video. And the first thing I saw was, the first thing I noticed was everybody on this call wasn't like 18 and under. It was all like grown men with responsibilities in life. And that resonated with me. So the first thing was just a, a genuine, um, you know, visual, like, you know, cool. And then this ethos thing that that super fizz has, has led with has been really welcoming. So, so all that technical or all that non-technical kind of brought me into it. And then, you know, the encouragement to just run on, on the Dasha. And so, um, so doing that was great, but the, and this isn't a negative at all, but what I was going to say is, but I, I actually went through by doing that, you know, I went through summer's guide. And so I, uh, I had all that stuff set up. So by the time I got to the launch pad, um, 
you know, I basically just skip through, you know, the, 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 which client are going to, are you going to use? And so, so uh, what, I guess if I had started with the launch pad, instead of starting with these tertiary guides, I might have chosen differently, right? I might've chosen Prism or Teku, whatever. I, I didn't though. I started with the most popular guy, you know, I Googled it and found the most popular guide and that drove me to Lighthouse. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's, I, I think about the launch pad in kind of two ways. One is people who start there and I don't, and I can't speak to what that experience might be like, but I think that would be a really valuable experience to get people who start at the launch pad and see where that takes them doing the installations themselves. So my, my route is the one I think is probably the more common one, but it's totally just a guess, which is you kind of came across the staking community, got some support, used a guide, and that guide is going to take you down one particular path. Um, and so, so, you know, like I'm terrified at this point to try another client because I have no reps at this point in the game. So like I'm a lighthouse guy, not because I have anything, any experience with any of the other ones. Um, so anyway, I wanted to make sure I frame that, that my perspective with the launch pad was really just about the deposit, it had nothing to do with any of the pre-setup and, and running a node and, and running a client, you know, a beacon node and a client and all that was sort of predetermined by the fact that I came to the launch pad already with a setup from a particular guide. So I think it's an important distinction when you talk about who are the people coming to the launch pad, um, what is their, their entrance ramp. So I just need to get through all the buttons. And then, um, so that's the first thing I wanted to share was, was, you know, I don't know how, how, or if anything would change in the launch pad, which I think is the focus of this call given that, but I think that perspective is important, though I can't put my finger on exactly what. Um, I do like a lot in the launch pad, there were options. I'm just saying I didn't care because I had a different perspective. Um, so then, then when I got to the actual part of the deposit, you know, certainly because it had run testnet, which is something that occur continuously, I continuously like about the East Acre community and the Discord, and probably on Reddit too, which is just an encouragement to run testnet before you go. I mean, everybody sort of says, hey, hey spin it up on testnet, spin it. And that just gives you the comfort level when you drag that JSON file. Um, but then I did run into uh, ledger issues. So, so I, I'm not a big ledger guy. I just recently started really taking cold storage seriously, got a ledger nano X. And so I was going to do my deposit. I just, I could not get it to work. And I, and I, I used Firefox, I used Brave, I used Firefox and it was just failing. And it was failing to make a, a, a function call or something to my ledger. My, the issue I had was my ledger actually never asked for confirmation. Uh, Jerome just left. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. It, it's fine. Yeah. You, can, you can watch this later if you don't cut me out of it. Um, but so the issue was I was on MetaMask and I hit boom and then it says, hey, I'm going to send a deposit and then my, my ledger just never triggered. You know, and I, I had the contract thing set up. I've used Uniswap with it before. Um, it just never triggered. And then I, I uh, rebooted, same thing. Then I tried, I went to the, the East Acre community on Discord. That someone said, hey, I used Brave successfully. I tried Brave, it didn't work. At that point, I was just done. So I, I just, you know, a couple other people in, in the Discord had said as well that they had the same issue. They just ended up going to MetaMask and, and doing it. Um, so I just, I gave in and did that. But if I were to do it again, I, I think it'd be interesting to, tr to try to work through that. Um, the, the talk of, of managing your keys and back to sort of my guide and my, my perspective and my technical ability. Um, you know, I, I didn't quite, I don't quite follow the advantages of why you want to use the ledger. I mean, I mean, I get it at a high level, but like I'm so used now to using the deposit CLI that uh, that's what I'm going to keep using because I'm comfortable with it. So um, is there a way, you know, it'd be, I would use the ledger one if there was a way to test it. And I don't know if that's possible. I don't know how I, you know, how I have, you know, the, the, the test net money on my ledger. Anyway, so those are, those are kind of the big, two big takeaways. I think really understanding the perspective of where someone comes might streamline the launch pad a, a bit. Um, and, um, and then I, ju I did have some issues using Ledger Nano X. So it wasn't, I'm not sure if it's a ledger issue or if it's a launch pad issue, if it doesn't work. Yeah, right, right. My, my sense was it was a launch pad issue only because I've had success with Uniswap. Um, and, and, and so my, 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 my gut, whatever that's worth, was that there was something going on. Someone actually in, in, in Discord had mentioned, that even though I was using Firefox and Brave, um, the nuts and bolts of interacting with it are different than Chrome. And so to try Chrome, but again, other people had confirmed they successfully did it with Brave um, on this chat today. A transistor, he said he did it with Microsoft Edge. So, um, you know, so I don't know. I mean, it could be lots of things. I'm not blaming anything, but, I, but, but when I noted there was a problem, other people 
had also had that problem. So it wasn't just me, even if it's only two people. So there's something going on there with the, with it, with support, whether it's my Mac and the browser and the MetaMask extension, or, you know, my firmware was up to date in the ledger, but anyway, there's something there that, that other people I'm sure are going to run into. So how did you solve that issue? Oh, I, I moved to MetaMask. It just went. Oh, okay. Okay. That was a hot wallet. Okay. And yeah. Just, just pressed on with something and it, you know, worked because that's, that's what I had used for, for you know, the test nets, sync in and the dash I'd use MetaMask. I did not use you know, the ledger. Well, nice. Thank you. That was, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Logan, just, just real quick. I'm out of curiosity because I think you're outlining a really good perspective saying that there's sort of our two camps of onboarding, right? There, there are sort of the, an audience that their first exposure to, uh, you know, being a solar staker is the launch pad. And there are some that are coming from entering within a community or being introduced to a guide first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with what you shared, knowing that you were sort of inundated with the community first and read up on the guides, and then you went to the launch pad. Did you feel that by going that route, when you got to the launch pad, there were any like red flags or something that you didn't understand? Did you feel like that was a good sort of on ramp to that launch pad? Or do you? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no, no, I definitely I enjoyed the launch pad experience a lot. I mean, I, th I think it's great. It's obvious. It's needed. Um, you know, when it comes to when it comes to 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 actually getting in the process, the launch pad's huge. I mean, these checklists, even the first ten. I didn't even mind a couple of times when I had to like restart the launch pad, having to re go through the ten in the beginning, like next night. I it didn't didn't bother me a lick. Like I was like, oh, this is good. I, I want that kind of safety and control. Um, and then when it gave me the options to pick the clients again, I liked the navigation, the four, you know, buttons and you could pick and read, um, you know, and I did, I read through everything. It's just, I remember being like, none of these are going to change what I'm going to do. Um, but the experience was very, very positive, um, over, yeah, overall. I mean, uh, so, so I'm not sure if that answers your question. I, I, I think yeah, it's laid yeah. out really, I think it's laid out really well. And I could see, um, if I was using it first, I could see, oh, good, these are my options, and then kind of going down some rabbit holes, and I could see that being very effective for for anybody. Mm -hmm. Awesome. No, uh, uh, just some general stuff. I think now that you mentioned the the ordering of the clients, like the if one and if two clients, I think the launchpad has a big influence on which clients people can use, maybe if they don't know them. So maybe they can um, yes. kind of reorder um, the clients based on how many people have clicked on a specific client. Mm -hmm. So if nobody has a Bezel um, if one node, maybe it can be placed as, a, as the first client. Maybe it attracts more people. I don't know, just my opinion. <laughs> um, I think Jess and also wanted to say something. Hey. Um, so uh, my question is more about corporate use and um, doing multiple validators and setting up multiple keys. Um, and I just wanted to ask um, how good the support is for that, for if you want to generate um, 100 keys and run 100 validators or whatever it is, uh, like, can you do it all in Launchpad or will you need to resort to, um, you know, uh, Linux or something? Um, for one, what was the last testnet? Zinkin or Spadina? Zinkin. All of I them. <laughs> doesn't matter. I, I did um 500 keys through the launch pad on one of the test nets, and it was time consuming because obviously you have to submit every transaction manually, but it worked fine. So is there anything that's going to make it not time consuming? Because, you know, if, if some corporates will hold a lot of ETH and will want to run a lot of validators and if you have to like you know do it manually for each transaction it's going to take a while and that's a, a good use of automation yeah um you can definitely use eth do from a testant will be the most efficient way i know that they, they can automate it great it's less user friendly though for us mere mortals uh uh, we encourage you to the launch. I, not I'm not sure if Ben is here, but maybe he knows how because he works with Techo and Techo kind of focuses on corporates. 
Ben, do you want to say something? <laughs> he just responded in the chat. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so all of the clients took out recently, so Teku Prison Lighthouse, everybody took out the ability to do batch deposits because none of our tools were audited and um, we we don't want to get sued. So, um, But on the other hand, if you have to do repeatedly manually, there's a higher chance yeah. of errors. Right. Yeah, but that's not the client devs problem. But <laughs> but uh, ETH2 has already been mentioned. That has been audited, and I can vouch for it. It's good stuff. Um, Stake.fish have recently put out a contract um, which aggregates deposits um, for comment. It's open source, um, so you, you can search out. It was in my last What's New in ETH2, so uh, you can look at that. Um, and other tools are emerging, but you, you want to be super cautious about using any third-party tool um do a lot of due diligence thank you stakefish is saying they got the contract audited in the uh, comments we still got the oh nice i didn't know that <laughs> i think ben's answer was the best answer we could have gotten to that question <laughs> Um, was there anyone else who wanted to say something in general? Suggestions um, about the launchpad or general criticism? I don't know. Uh, when I was doing my deposits halfway through, I did you know half from one address, half from another. Uh, so halfway through, I had to change uh, which address I was using on my ledger through MetaMask. And I messed up somehow. I popped a transaction, but that address didn't have any more ETH in it. So I had to reject the transaction and then change my address. And when I tried to redo it, uh, the retry transaction button didn't seem to do anything. You just click it and nothing would happen. It wouldn't pop a MetaMask window. So I had to refresh the page. And then at that point I lost all of the you know valid deposit or whatever it said. So I needed to manually count down and like double check the public key to figure out, you know, which public key I should be depositing to. So that was a little bit stressful, but I don't know, maybe it was a bug on my end. I'm not sure. But other than that, uh, it worked well. It was, I, I felt safe using it. It was a, a good, good experience. I'm actually curious how many people had problems um, using Ledger or any, I wonder if, has anyone tried with Trezor or any other hardware wallet? Or are there any Windows users? Did everyone give up on Windows yet? <laughs> I, I did my deposits from my Windows machine. Okay. Well, we had so many Windows users in the test nets, but um, I think the community, the Ustaker community kind of convinced everyone to use Linux. Fizz kind of shields Linux really hard, so. <laughs> It's definitely uh, the best choice. Definitely the best choice. Yeah, I was like the the. I, go ahead. In, in my defense, Buddha, I didn't know that I was shilling Linux. I just thought everyone used it, so it wasn't like purposeful. <laughs> I just thought everyone was, you know, on the same thing. Yeah, like Ethereum two or the test nets themselves was the reason for me to switch to Linux because before that, my main I'm only on Windows and on Mac OS. And just for the um, Ethereum 2 clients, I switched to Linux. Um, I think many people had have the vision that Linux is just command line, but it's actually the same or very similar to macOS. So if there are people who are not on Linux yet, switch now. You still have a few days left. <laughs> yeah, that's from my side. I think I will hand it over to Fizz. Yeah, actually, um, I had spoken with Michael, and I think uh, Michael is Michael Geeson is on tap to do follow up, wrap up, right? Yep, yep, sure. So just uh, before we kind of wrap this call up, uh, no one else has anything to share or, or or anything like that to comment on. We did need to pump the workshop. I forgot about that. Did you want yep. to do that? Yeah, so uh, real quick, just as a reminder, uh, before we get into the workshop, um, the raffle for the ledger is at poop.fun. 
the direct link uh, is poop.fun slash 12. Uh, all you have to do is connect your wallet and any poops that you have. So if you have one or many, uh, the volume of poops uh, is the amount of votes that you'll get uh, for this raffle. If you do not have any poop, uh, please feel free to join the poop discord. Uh, or excuse me, uh, well, you can join the Poop Discord. You can also join the eStaker Discord at invite.gg slash eStaker. We have a Poop channel, and there is a pinned message with instructions on how to obtain uh, your first Poop. Um, that'll get you at least one vote uh, for this raffle if you don't have one. That Poop. Uh, and second, cool. by the way, oh, sorry. sorry to interrupt. That Poop, the my first Poop one's not uh, included as a ticket. Oh, yep, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Good call. Which is probably a good thing for civil resistance. Yep. Yep. Good call. Good call. Uh, regardless, though, that you can still get help uh, from these communities at those discords. Uh, so feel free to join either way. Um, you know, with the spirit of this call specifically in the roundtable and, and sort of having these open discussions about whether they be grievances, grievances or frustrations about the process or things that were done really well or things that may have helped you. Um, that is sort of the soul of the East Staker community. Uh, we try to do the best we can to promote uh, events and push content to help the solo staking community. One of those things specifically is uh, the validator workshop that the East Staker community is hosting on Saturday, November 21st at, oof, is it one? Let me look that up real quick. Yes, so that is at uh, 1 p.m. UTC time. Uh, all of this can be found at our new ETH Staker home at ethstaker.cc. If you go to that URL, you'll see all of the applicable details for the validator workshop, including the uh, technical prerequisites uh, needed in order to get you started, uh, making sure that you have a clean uh, computer set up with and how to install operating systems and uh, all necessary uh, prerequisite information is on there. In addition to the sign up link, again, that is uh, Saturday, November 21st for that event. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Jerome uh, for speaking with us today. I think it was uh, fantastic to get Ledger in here and speak more on uh, cold storage specifically. I think sometimes it can be a, uh, a, a lesser known thing within the crypto market. We're so focused on being a validator that sometimes we forget about keeping things safe and secure and uh, cold storage is always a great solution for that. Uh, so uh, thank you, Jerome, again for that. And uh, I think we're good here. Thanks everyone from the East Acre community and uh, we'll see everyone again. Hi everyone. Thanks everyone for coming out. Bye -bye. Good times. Here's that.